This one's pretty beat up. It smells like death in here. And there's some pretty grody stuff going on, but. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a set of cook stores here today, and the complaint is, is that they're not working. Now, these cook stores are actually multiplexed, meaning that one compressor controls those ones, these ones, and another one. And the complaint is actually only for these drawers. So more than likely that means that um, it's not a compressor related issue or a refrigerant related issue because these are the only ones that are at 70 degrees. So we're gonna open it up and see what we can find. They make it a little difficult to get in here, but we have a temperature controller tucked way back in there. So um, usually what I can do is stick my hand back there see if I hear a click yeah see there's no click when I turn the control so more than likely we're gonna have a bad temperature controller um, I don't know if I have one of those or not so I'm gonna have to go look in the van so here's my unit um, the coil is not in horrendous shape the TXV powerhead looks kind of weak but so basically the temp control doesn't click so we're gonna test it and see if it's bad or not I have a feeling that it is I've got this little driver I got many years ago you can put a socket wrench in it but anyways um works perfect for undoing these things if you can get it in there and then you can twist them off like that super nice and then if it's too tight you can put a socket or you can grab it with channels too yeah there we go get this guy out so the temp control is completely open and i have it turned on right now and the contacts are not closing in it so we've got a bad temp control for sure so I've got a new control installed, and listen. It actually clicks now. So let's turn it on and see if this solves our problem. So we got power back on. There you go. Solenoid's running now. So sequence of operation is fan motors run 24 seven on this unit. Uh, condensing unit, the only interconnecting uh, is just the refrigerant piping. Uh, and the system has a temperature controller in the coil. This is a master coil, this is a slave coil. Um, and there's actually a solenoid valve in each one and this temp control controls this one. So whenever this box temp gets high enough or this coil temp right here gets high enough, temp control calls, sends power to both of the solenoids, both of the coils should come on and start cooling. I noticed that this drain pan is loose. You gotta make sure that they're hooked in. There's two little hooks in the back. It's gonna be impossible for me to show it on video, but they come undone all the time. Um, so we're gonna fix that. Come up to the refrigeration rack. Uh, my compressor is system C is in Charlie. And uh, my sight glass is flashing. It shouldn't be flashing right now. Um, so we're probably gonna to have to top off the charge and uh, figure out where the refrigerant leak is. I'm seeing oil all right here, so we could have, a, uh, I don't know, that's really just dust, but well, at a minimum, we're gonna top off the charge. I'm having the leak check every region that's on that circuit, so I'm on their plate chiller right now. Uh, unfortunately, because of the design, you gotta pull the cages out to get into the evaporator. Um, I have this one left to do, and then they have a waitress run on the other side, but I already did the one that we put a temp control in. There's no leaks on that one, I checked it, so. This coil's nasty, I, I mean, just off a of principle, it should be changed. Look at how corroded it is. It's just rusty. Surprisingly, I'm not picking up any leaks in here. It's really weird. It's just all rusted out. We'll talk to them about that one, but we're gonna keep going trying to find where this leak is at. But yeah, I'm not picking up any leaks on it. This one's pretty beat up. It smells like death in here. And there's some pretty grody stuff going on, but um, the drains are plugged up too because it's full of water. But anyways, I'm just gonna do a leak check real quick. This one right off the bat has a bad fan blade, it's shattered. Anyways, we're gonna keep leak checking. So far, no leaks. See that blue stuff down at the end? You can totally tell what the salad dressings and the vinegars and citrus acid does to the copper lines. It's interesting because I'm not finding any leaks. So I didn't find any leaks at the coil. And then before I disturbed anything with the compressor off, I leak checked everything to see if maybe it was a cap or something like that and nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and check the refrigerant level in the receiver, top off the charge if necessary, and then just tell the customer to keep an eye on it. Remember whenever possible to loosen the packing gland when you actuate these valves. Um, 
sometimes they don't have them, but when they do, you want to loosen them so that way it doesn't ruin the valve and the valve will last a lot longer. So I started it up and uh, we have abnormally high suction pressure. I mean, the box is under a load, but I wouldn't think it's under that much of a load. We're gonna let it run for a few minutes and then we're gonna do a pump down test and test the suction read. Make sure we don't have a leak by on the valve plate. So I front seated the suction service valve and boy, this thing, it's been about a minute and it hasn't pulled into a vacuum yet. Usually they should pull down a lot faster than that on these K body compressors. So this one actually isn't a K body, but I should say semi hermetic. So we're gonna power down and see if it holds the pressure. All right, we're powered down. We're not leaking back really fast, but it's sure not pulling down very fast. Sometimes you can feel it, but. Yeah, that's interesting. That's not good. It should have pulled down a lot faster than that. Suction pressure seems to be coming down. I mean, we, we probably have a few valves that are flooding because I did get each box up to about 60 degrees. So, and it is dropping. It just kind of concerned me with how high it started, but it's coming down. We've got a cold section, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and check the receiver level here in just a minute. You can see my compressor with the thermal imager. Let's go back here. You can see the liquid line receiver is about three quarters full. You see where it gets really hot, right about the three quarter mark. So I already added a couple pounds of gas and heated this bad boy up. And you can clearly see that the temperature change happens right at the three quarter mark on the liquid line receiver. So that's about all the refrigerant we're gonna to add to this bad boy. Now I weighed my cylinder before, so we'll have to check the weight to see exactly how much I added. But uh, we're running a clear sight glass now. Suction pressure's calming down a little bit. It'll get there. It's just, imagine the box is just still under a heavy load and we got valves because suction line's nice and frosty cold. So we got some valves that are flooding back right now. So once it cools down the boxes, that suction pressure should drop. I'm still gonna talk to them about this compressor and tell them that we might have a valve plate going out in it possibly. But, all right, we're gonna wrap it up. That's pretty much it on this one. Um, and uh, we'll submit a quote to the customer probably to change that valve plate. I'm gonna talk to them first to see if they wanna try. We had a service call on what uh, reach and cooler drawers basically that weren't working properly. Okay, so when I got there, you know, I assess everything and I listened to what the manager had to tell me. And the manager said that this one particular set of drawers was not working properly. Now, I happen to know the layout and how everything works at that store. So I know that the condensing unit or compressor that controls those drawers controls one, two, three other sets of drawers. So I asked the manager, hey, are you having issues with these other ones? And he says, no, they're fine. So that led me to, you know, hone in on the set of cook drawers and kind of ignore the other ones temporarily. So diagnosed a bad temperature controller, okay? I understood the sequence of operation and how this unit worked, so it was very easy for me to dive in there. Plus, the temperature controllers, they're very common to fail on this particular unit, and it has a lot to do with the, uh, the product that the customer stores inside the unit. It's very acidic, lots of uh, vinegars in it, and it tends to attack the temperature controller sensing bulb and deteriorate it. So anyways, I went ahead and uh, replaced the temperature controller after I diagnosed it being bad, but I didn't just stop there. Even though the manager said it was just that box, I still went up onto the roof, check out the condensing unit, saw that the unit was flashing, the sight glass should not have been flashing, so I went ahead and applied gauges, diagnosed that there's something funky going on there with the compressor, whether it's a reed that's going bad or the motor of the compressor, there's something funky because it's taken a long time to pump down. Um, I went ahead and brought that up to the manager. They actually decided that they didn't want to pursue that any further at this time. We are still in the middle of this COVID thing, so they're just doing minimal repairs, you know, just stuff to get them by, basically. But went ahead and looked for a leak, too. I was very surprised that that coil that was completely disgusting uh, was not leaking. I did warn them about it, but again, they want to hold off on that one. So I actually never found a refrigerant leak. I pulled apart every single coil, leak checked every coil. There's always a possibility that there's a leak in the line set somewhere. I did do a leak check up on the roof at the condensing unit too. Didn't find anything there. So we pretty much left it at that. Went ahead and let the customer, you know, make the decision to not dive into the other issues. 
but I noted it. So that way, you know, if any uh, myself or any of the other techs go out there, then we know, hey, there's a problem. You know, we already know there's a refrigerant leak somewhere, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I'm always trying to preach this whole big picture diagnosis thing. I am not perfect whatsoever. Okay, guys. Um, I use these videos as a uh, motivation for myself. Okay. Because regularly when I go on these calls, sometimes I just want to go home and I don't want to look at the big picture. I just want to change attempt control and move on. But you know, um, the fact that I start filming these calls kind of helps to motivate me like, Hey, I, you know, sometimes I film and then I don't end up filming. So I've got a hard drive full of footage that I can't use because it's not complete because I'll start filming. Then the customer will turn on music. Sometimes I lose motivation. You know, so again, I'm trying to stress to you guys that I am not this perfect technician that does a perfect job every single time. Okay. I too want to get lazy. I too want to just, you know, take a shortcut and throw a temp control in there and move on. Okay. But I have to try to remind myself to take a step back just like I preach. Okay. So in a way you guys hold me accountable because I'm always thinking like, Hey, you know what? I'm preaching this stuff. I better follow this stuff. Okay. And in all honesty, most of the time, you can usually find a bunch of stuff, okay? In refrigeration, it's usually not just one issue. Once you start looking, man, it's like Pandora's box. You can start going down just all kinds of issues, okay? And we're not doing anything wrong. We're just giving the information to the customer and allowing them to choose to fix it or not. If they don't fix it, so be it. But I have it on paper or invoice, you know, a list of things that are wrong. So that way, when they have another failure, they don't call me and say, hey, this is a warranty issue, you know? So anyways... Big picture diagnosis is kind of my mantra. I'm always trying to preach it, okay? Really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Do me a favor. Go check out my tools channel, HVACR Tools. I currently still only have one video on there, but there's going to be more coming soon. Uh, we have a few changes coming soon. Some new sponsors and stuff coming to the stream, to the podcast. I'm sorry, to the um, live streams and to the uh, videos. But um, just remember that I don't plan on any of that stuff changing the way that I do things, okay? Nobody's going to dictate the videos that I make. Nobody's going to tell me what to show or anything like that. Um, I've gone through a lot of different people, and, uh, you know, a lot of people have reached out, and, yeah, they're just not really the right fit. So I do have a few new ones coming on, and we'll be announcing those soon. And, uh, yeah, but other than that, um, catch you guys maybe on the live stream Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time, where I kind of discuss all this stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay.